I think earning money is one of the simplest things I've ever learned. And it's one of the most misunderstood things. You mentioned how you were making 4,000 something yeah. dollars a year. Your expenses were 6,000, I think, something yeah. like that. And then you started making 14. No, my expenses were 6,000. I owed 6,000. You owed 6,000. I owed everybody that I knew. And you were making around $14,000 a year after that, shortly after no, that. No, I went from earning $4,000 a, so a, a year to $14,500 a, a month. Exactly. Now, if you annualize that, that was 175 a year. So I went from earning 4,000 mm -hmm. a year to 175. Mm -hmm. I hadn't earned 175 that year. I right. got it up to 14,500 a month. So if you annualize got it, got it, that's, got it. That's a change. Phenomenal change. Is it possible for anyone to go from poverty level to extremely Absolutely. financially successful? Absolutely. I think earning money is one of the simplest things I've ever learned. And it's one of the most misunderstood things. Wealthy people historically have always had multiple sources of income. They don't have one. They have many. I was cleaning floors. I thought the answer was work harder. Because mm -hmm. I, I really wanted to earn some money. Yeah, of course. And I thought it was all important. Today, my attitude towards money has changed dramatically. But I thought the answer was get another office to clean. Well, I was working so hard, I passed out on the street. I would have been maybe 27, 28. I literally passed out on the street. I was working so hard. I came to, and there's a great big cop looking at me. I was laying there, it was scary. There was a group of people around me. I saw lights flashing. Then I saw a, guy, a couple of guys in uniform with a stretcher. And it was scary. I had passed out. I guess they thought I had dropped dead. I had a heck of a time getting away from them, but I did get away. They didn't take me to the hospital. I talked wow. them out of it. <clears throat> I got away and I got thinking, I'm not doing this right. Mm -hmm. Working harder, working more hours is not the way. No. Yeah. In fact, Napoleon Hill wrote that in Think and Grow Rich. He said, if you are one of those people who believe that hard work and honesty alone will bring riches, perish the thought, it is not true. Riches, when they come in huge quantities, never come as a result of hard work. They come if they come mm -hmm. at all in response to definite demands based upon the application of definite principles and not by chance or luck. So you've got to find a demand and fill it, but you've got to follow princi definite principles to do it. Wow. In other words, it's got to be in harmony with the law. You've got to give more than you get. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to get, forget it. Yeah. Well, I got by myself and I thought, I'm doing something wrong. I was earning more money, but here I'm passionate. I said, it's not, this is not normal. And it's like a little voice in my head said, if you can't clean all of them, don't clean any of them. So I got all dressed up. People now accuse me of sleeping in my suit. I got, I wouldn't take a suit off. I didn't matter where I was. Because <laughs> I knew the cleaners were tired and I would go around. I got other people cleaning offices. Mm -hmm. And I knew pretty well where they'd be. So I'd drop around and I'd bring coffee and donuts. and I would drop in and I would talk to them about goals. And then I'd go to the next person. But I always was dressed up because I knew how tired you get. And if I was in working clothes, they'd expect me to help them so they could finish and go home. Interesting. But when I had shiny shoes and a suit and shirt and tie, they didn't expect me to help them clean. So I'd go on to the next place and then to the next place. And that's when I started to open offices. Mm. I went from Toronto to Montreal to Boston to Cleveland to Atlanta to London, England. And you hired cleaners. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Everywhere I went. Yeah. Yeah. I had people cleaning. What should someone think about if they're struggling financially right now or they feel like they're, they've been struggling for many years and it feels like they're just surviving week after week, month after month, they're not sure how to get to that kind of sense of freedom for at least a six month runway or beyond. What should they start thinking about? Do you know what you've just described, I believe the majority of people are living that way. Yeah. The majority. Now that's rather sad, but I think yeah. it's true. <clears throat> and it's because we only have one problem in the whole world, and that's ignorance. They're living in ignorance. They don't know that what they're doing is going to keep them where they are. And they keep doing it because they don't know how to change. They're overwhelmed with the debt. People are saying, I need the money. They haven't got it. They want to take their family on a vacation. They don't have the money to go. 
So they may borrow it and go anyway. Now they got more debt. They have to understand that they don't have to live that way. Mm. I wrote a book called You're Born Rich. The truth is you are. Most people are just a little short of money, mm -hmm. but you are born rich, rich mm -hmm. in potential. Anybody can go to our site, go to bobproctor.com. You can download the book, You Were Born Rich, free. It won't cost mm -hmm. you a cent. Mm -hmm. And chapter two is how much is enough. There's a, it's it described very well how to get out of debt. You've got to create a debt repayment program where it's all done automatically. Mm -hmm. And then you focus on prosperity. You've got to have a financial goal. You've got to work toward it. And you've got to understand that you can earn more than you're earning. And wealthy people don't have one source of income. They have more than one. I was earning money all last night while I was sleeping. Yeah. You can actually earn more money when you're sleeping than you can spend when you're awake. Yeah. You know, it, it sounds like a cute line, but it's true. There's no end to what we can earn. If you are not getting information from someone who is already wealthy, then you're probably getting information from the wrong people. Most people ask their brother-in-law or the guy next door or the girl they know, how do I earn more? Hell, if they knew, they'd be earning it. They don't know. And most people talk to people that don't know. Carlyle put it very well. He said he did not believe in the collective wisdom of individual ignorance. Mm. And that's where most people are getting it from people who don't know any more than themselves. I think you have to go. That's why these seminars are so important today. Yeah, yeah. People have the opportunity to go and learn. Most people won't pay to go. I tell people, listen, you invest in this, it'll probably be the, and borrow the money to do it. It's probably the last time you'll ever have to borrow money. Yeah, we, it's true. I'm not, our seminars are not raw, raw. It's not nothing. Our seminars teach people about themselves. Mm -hmm. It's like when Bill Gove said, if I want to be free, I got to be me. I'm thinking, I better know who me is. I didn't know mm -hmm. who me was. I was doing a lot of things. I was doing them right. And I was earning money, but I didn't know who I was. I start, started to study me. Mm. And the more I know me, the better I know you. You only yeah. have to study yourself. You'll know what everybody, because we're all the same. Yeah. It's our behavior that's different, our results that are different. I heard uh, a friend of mine, Dean Graziosi, I don't know if he coined this or someone else said it, and he said it from someone else, but he said, those that pay, pay attention. And when you invest in yourself, you're paying attention to You know, I never heard that with. before, but that is the truth. Those that pay, pay attention. But if you don't pay for it, you're not going to pay as much attention. If you pay more, you'll pay more attention to learn. I had this. an aunt and uncle who were as poor as church mice. I mean, they just didn't have anything. <laughs> and they had a whole house full of kids. And I used to drop by their house periodically. I was doing very well. And I was teaching seminar. And I remember it was around Christmas time. And he was rushing around trying to get credit cards from some big store so they could buy presents for the kids. Yeah. And I said, you know something? He said, never mind, next year will be different. I said, you know something? Next year is going to be exactly the same as it is this year because you never change you. Wow. I said, you should get into the seminars and learn something. I know something you don't know. Well, they came to the seminar. He got paid every two weeks. So that meant three times a year, I think, he get paid three times, maybe four times a year, he get paid three times in a month. That one pay was extra because they were budgeted for two pays. I made them pay to come to it. Wow. Something said I made them pay. And I think they thought I should have comped them into it. But you know, Mark thanked me, my aunt, I don't know how many times that I charged them. She said, we wouldn't have kept coming. I didn't even know what you were talking about. I was running seminars, it was seven evenings from seven to 10. It was running over a series of nights years ago. And she said, I wouldn't have kept coming. But she said, because we paid, I came. Of course. He's right. If they pay, they pay attention. That That's is it. so true. That's it. And if they don't, they you're, don't not gonna be a, you're not going to care. When you hear something you don't like, eh, this is not for me. That's Let me right. get out of here. Mm -hmm. eh, I got something better to do. Yeah. Especially in LA. Ah, I want to go to the beach. Mm -hmm. This is too hard work. Yeah. It's confronting my ego. Ah, I don't need this. I'm firmly convinced if a person doesn't understand a paradigm, a paradigm is, an, is nothing but a multitude of habits. Uh -huh. They're programmed into your subconscious mind that control your behavior. It's got nothing to do with how smart you are. It's got nothing to do with what your formal education is. It's got nothing to do with which side of the tracks you come from. Mm -hmm. It has to do with your paradigm. The paradigm is a program in your subconscious mind. It's both genetic and environmental that's controlling your behavior. 
Everyone that can hear my voice knows how to do better than they're doing. And they may wonder, why don't I do it? It's because you're programmed to do what you're doing. Yeah. And until you change the program, nothing's going to change. Mm -hmm. Paradigm has to be changed. I love that. What would you say are the, if you could share three key habits for people that if they want to continue to grow every day, be more prosperous, be more abundant, happier, joyful, healthier in their life, what are three key things, habits every day, not talking about morning routine, but just overall habits every single day, what should people be focusing on consistently? They should study every day. Study. They should have a mentor. Someone that has already accomplished what they dream about. They might not even know the person, but they could get introduced to them and ask them, what are half a dozen things I should do every day? Yeah. Ask them. They know. Mm -hmm. Most people are getting advice from people that don't know any more than themselves. Yeah. And the third one, you've definitely got to have a goal. And when you write it, you've already got it intellectually. So you operate intellectually, emotionally, and physically. Well, your intellectual mind, the second you say, the second you decide on it, you've got it. It tells you in the Bible, before you speak, I'll hear you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's because the thought always precedes the word. Mm -hmm. The second you get emotionally involved, you've got it emotionally. Yep. So you've got it intellectually, you've got it emotionally, it's only a period of time till you've got it physically. Mm. Be, do, have, yeah. That's right. But the have comes in a period of time. So it's, every, not, it's not overnight? <laughs> every seed has a gestation or an incubation period. Yeah. When a woman gets pregnant with a child, it takes 280 days. Yeah. The husband doesn't come home a month later and say, come on, where is it? Right. He waits, as James Allen know. said, as one who understands. Mm. He understands there's a gestation period. Where I come from, if you plant a seed for a carrot, it takes approximately 70 days for it to manifest. Mm. All physical seeds have a gestation or an incubation period. We know that now, but we didn't always know that. We weren't always aware. No one knows what the gestation period is for a spiritual seed, and an idea is a spiritual seed. Mm -hmm. But we do know that it operates by the same laws. And the laws of the universe are precise. They can be studied. Yeah. They can be understood. We operate by law. Our life is governed by laws. Like we know it's going to get dark tonight. We don't wonder if it is. Yeah. You know when the tide goes out, it's coming back. Winter never follows winter. We know these things. That's all an expression of law. Mm -hmm. Well, when we bring our life into harmony with the laws, we're going to enjoy more of life. Yeah. If we fight it, we're going to lose. If you want to learn how to make more money and master money in your life, then check out this video right here. Skip a meal, but don't skip reading. Said read 30 mm. minutes a day. I don't give a damn what it wow. is. And today, I don't mean internet crap. I mean, read something, that, a biography, read something mm. that's a strategy, read something that's going to change your life. And the second thing I tell people is feeding your mind's great, but you've got to also strengthen your body.